Wednesday, December 30th, 2020, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to talk about the origins of the pounds of sterling. Yes, the British currency is called pound sterling. And I have to uh, thank one of my viewers from the U.S. who wanted to know more about the origin of pound sterling. Yes, we call it pound sterling but it's actually originally pound of sterling. And uh, this exercise was really good for me because I hadn't done it before. And it's all to do with etymology, which is the study of the origin of words. And it uh, taught me a, a big lesson, which I'll come to at the end after we look at uh, what really is a pound of sterling, right? So I looked at uh, many references uh, I do have a book on numismatics, this one here. There you go. The Teach Yourself Guide to Numismatics, C.C. Chamberlain. Uh, so there you go. And, and I actually bought this book from my coin dealer. And it has the receipt from 1961 uh, from Foils, the world's greatest bookshop. Not sure if they're still open, Foils in London. And that's how much uh, the person paid for it, seven and six. <laughs> that's the old currency. That's another interesting uh, aspect of pound sterling. I'm not going to go into that uh, today. I'm going to go into the origin of the word. So I started out uh, here on page 131. Talks about pound. So the word pound comes from the Latin uh, pondus, which means a weight. And uh, what else does it say here? Well, uh, the book says, just as the Libra of the ancient Romans was a specified weight. So that is actually the pondus is, is what you call a weight. Is a, But uh, the Libra was a specific measure of weight. And uh, what happened in England is they interchanged uh, Libra and, and pounds or pondus and it became the pounds, right? So I will come in a minute to, my, to how much the Libra uh, was or the pound in terms of grams and it's changed as well over time. Uh, the uh, Italians, for example, call it Libra. The French call it Livre. Uh, I always remember when I used to go on business trips to Italy, a lot of my clients used to say, well, how is the Libra Sterlina, right? How is the pound sterling? Uh, okay, now we're going to look at uh, sterling. What does sterling mean? And this is the interesting part, sterling. So it says, seems to have been applied to any small silver coin of fine quality. So... Nowadays, sterling is considered a standard for silver, like 0925, uh, the other uh, 75, uh, of course, is the uh, other metal that they alloy with the coin. So, but uh, really, it, it, it's not really how it started. So let, let's uh, continue. And it says, especially pennies. So they used to be pennies. Uh, let's continue. Nobles and Sterlings, also the quotation from Langland given under Spurious. The derivation of this word is sometimes given as from Easterlings, the Hansa merchants. But the medieval Latin word Sterlingus occurs in a document drawn up before the time of the Hansa merchants. And the French word Sterlin occurs in a metrical romance written by Wace, the Anglo-Norman poet, uh, 1174. Other suggested derivations are from star or starling from the devices of early pennies. From its use as standard currency, the word came to mean anything of fixed authorized value. So in my opinion, <laughs> it's a uh, starling, right? A small star because a silver, small silver coin is like a star, it's shiny, right? And uh, 
the sterling coin used to be a penny weight and we'll come to how much a penny weight was in relation to the pound of course so also troy weight uh, that that's what we need to uh, know about as well um, during the middle ages uh, troy or trois it was one of the major, well, probably the major trading post. It's a city in France, T-R-O-Y-E-S. Of course, now in English, it's spelled T-R-O-Y. Uh, and, and that's uh, the measure that we still use uh, for uh, precious metals. So um, back to Rome. <laughs> uh, so I took a few notes here. Uh, so in Latin, pondus means weight, right? So the English kept that word as Libra, interchanged it. But uh, the L that we see with the little bars for the sign for the British pound or uh, uh, pound sterling, that comes from L for Libra. And uh, the Roman weight for uh, a Libra was 328.9 grams. And uh, a twelfth of a Libra was an uncia. So that's where ounce comes from. And that was 27.408 grams. Uh, so after the fall of Rome, during the Middle Ages, Tra or Troy became the major trading post uh, for Europe. And uh, everyone used to go to, uh, to the fairs uh, in, in Troy. And uh, there, uh, Libra or Livre, I guess in France, used to be, 373.24176 grams. And why am I so uh, exact about this? Well, because if you change uh, the decimals a little bit and you multiply it, for example, by a certain amount, it makes a big difference in the end of the day. So basically, sterling is a little star and uh, I don't have a, a silver penny. Uh, I do have a threepence uh, coin, which is made of silver, which is actually about 1.39 grams. As you can see, uh, uh, real silver is about 1.3, but I can tell you that the penny weight, which is the size of the sterling coin, used to be 1.55 grams. So now we've got here 1.3 grams, and it's uh, three, three pennies or threepence. Uh, so it shows you that uh, the lesson that I got from this is that it's not only today, but through the centuries, the powers that be that control the money, they've been basically shortchanging everyone and giving them less and less. <laughs> is it any wonder they, that they still hold most of the wealth? Uh, they don't want people to know these things, of course. So yeah, that's the closest I got to getting, um, how can I say, uh, an old starling, but it's actually, they call it a th uh, threepence, as you can see, three pennies. Uh, and really the amount of silver in here is not even uh, the original penny weight. So where do we get a pound of starlings uh, or sterlings? Did they have a, a huge coin that was uh, that weighed a pound. No, what they did is that they had uh, the measure of 240 of sterlings, or the penny weight, was a pound. And I think a lot of people in the UK still know that uh, before decimalization, 240 uh, pennies or pence equaled a pound. But in this case, it was 240 uh, silver pennies of 1.55 grams, that used to be a pound. And that used to add up to 373.24176 grams. Yes, it's more than the Roman gram, but it's the gram uh, from Troyes or Troy, right? Uh, the other interesting point is that a 12th of the pound or a 12th of the 373 uh, grams uh, of the uh, Troy pound should be 31.1035 grams, which is, of course, how many uh, grams there are in a Troy ounce. 240 uh, starlings should be, of course, 
um, 12 troy ounces. And I did an experiment. <laughs> As you can see, I took uh, 12 of these uh, one ounce uh, Britannias, silver coins, and I put, put them on the scale. And you can see that I got a little bit more, 373.88. It's probably because it's 999, right? So, uh, but it's really close to that measure of 373.24176. So to sum up, uh, the pound of sterling, that's the other thing as well. It's the pound of sterling, but then it became like pound sterling, right? So it's a pound of something. It goes to show you that money is a weight of a commodity, and in this case, silver. So uh, little star sterling, shiny little metals. I know this one isn't that shiny anymore, but it is silver. And of course, it's not the exact weight. Um, the pound of sterling, of course, is 244 penny weights. Uh, each penny weight is 1.555174 grams. Uh, you multiply that by 240, you get 373.21476. You multiply the 240 uh, uh, penny weights or, or uh, sterling coins, and you get 373.24176 grams. And of course, uh, 240 uh, pennies as well, or penny weights, or sterling coins is equal uh, to 12 ounces. And 12 is a, an interesting number because uh, a lot of uh, <laughs> things are measured in dozens, right? So it, it makes sense. So what about the gold sovereign? Because legally, uh, it is a, a pound. Well, uh, that just goes to show again that uh, they've really just uh, messed things up. <laughs> but according to this book, it says here in 1816, so just after the Napoleonic Wars, when the silver standard was abolished in England, the unit of value was then the pound sterling or sovereign. So they made uh, the little gold sovereign a pound of sterling, which if you think about it, doesn't really make sense because sterling is a silver coin. Uh, its finest was fixed at 22 carats. The first gold sovereign was struck under Henry VII. So yeah, um, another war, <laughs> another reset, right? 1816, right after the Napoleonic Wars, they had to go off the silver standard because they probably didn't have any more silver and they had to make uh, 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 the gold sovereign uh, pound sterling, which doesn't make any sense at all. And of course, in this century, after World War I, really, uh, the currency here or the money of the UK is lost all connection to the metals. Uh, pound sterling now is just a word. It doesn't really mean, it, mean anything. So the original pound of sterling, of course, were 240 of uh, these little sterling coins or sterling, uh, which weighed a penny weight, uh, which is about 1.55 uh, grams and 240 of them, of course, equaled a libra or a pound or 373.24 uh, uh, grams. So that was the, the, the real pound of sterling. As I said, uh, the big lesson from this is that um, the powers that be that control uh, the money, uh, they keep shortchanging people. And why do they do that? Well, because uh, because of wars, because they spend too much and they, they don't want to pay back. <laughs> uh, it's basically default through hundreds of years. And is it any wonder that we're still in the same situation nowadays where the few at the top own everything? Well, it's because they control the money and they're able to uh, fool people. And I think changing definitions of words is really dangerous and that's why I'm always really uh, annoyed about people who say that inflation is the CPI. So now you can understand uh, it's a pound of sterling and it's and it's 240 little uh, coins of 1.55 grams. 
So that's Bounce Sterling. So if I was uh, JP Morgan <laughs> in a hearing in Parliament, let's say, or Mario Neck or Maneco 64, and they asked me, what is uh, pound sterling? I would say, well, it's 240 uh, penny weights or 240 sterling coins of 1.55 grams. Nothing else. Everything else is credit. <laughs> and uh, yes, a gold sovereign is money as well, but it's not a pound of sterling. So there you go. I hope uh, you enjoyed that, not just for my U.S. viewers and viewers all around the world that want to know what uh, the term really means, but also the viewers in the U.K. I would say uh, that the majority of people in the U.K. as well don't know don't know about this. And uh, I, I really like to thank <laughs> the viewer for asking me about this because it's made me do the exercise and look at it uh, really thoroughly. So there you go. Uh, it's a little early uh, this morning because I'm going to play golf today. It is cold. Uh, I feel like I'm going to go skiing. I've got thermal underwear on and uh, Billy is still asleep uh, because uh, I didn't want to wake him up. So let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 7.42 a.m. London. We've got spot gold, 18.80, uh, up about $2. We got silver at 26.28, up about 5 cents. The Dow is up 81, up a quarter of a percent. S&P uh, 500 is up a third of a percent. NASDAQ is up a third of a percent. Uh, the currencies, <laughs> the pound of sterling, not really <laughs> whatever this uh, imposter is. Bank of England note versus the dollar. The dollar is another a story for another day. That's a weight of silver as well. But be as it may, uh, the British pound versus the dollar is up a third of a percent. The fiat currencies, the euro is up a quarter and the dollar is down 0.2 versus the yen. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure uh, you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Parler and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great uh, day. Take care. Bye.